Greetings. Welcome to Exploratory Data Analysis with Excel, Part 4, Box Plots. If you've reached this particular video a little prematurely in the series, if you're looking for video number one, the starting point in the series, just go ahead and click up here and you'll find video number one in the series. Also, in the details below this video, you can get access to a GitHub repository where you can download all of the workbooks that you see me create and work with in this particular video series. Box plots. Last time in video three, we talked about histograms, which was a way of exploring your numeric data visually. And what we saw was that histograms are pretty useful by themselves, but they get more powerful when you add dimensions, when you add more variables, when you add more columns of data into the visualization or the Excel chart. And we saw how we could use a pivot chart to do that. Today, we're going to talk about an out-of-the-box Excel data visualization that works with the numeric data and another dimension. In particular, what it works with is a categorical. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's, let's go to Excel. Okay, you can see here I'm in Excel. I'm in part four worksheet here, which you can, of course, get from the GitHub that I mentioned earlier. And all I've done is taken the data that we've been working with so far in this series, and I just hid most of the columns because we're just not gonna need them. And that gives me some more real estate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a box plot of age. And what I would like to do is I would like to see age in my box plot plotted against new survived. Because I wanna see essentially the age of those that survived versus those that perished. And I'm not gonna to explain too much about a box plot, I'm just gonna create one, and then I'll explain how you actually interpret a box plot. So first up, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the H column here. Column H, and then I'm gonna go up to Insert, and I'm gonna go over here to this little bar chart, statistical chart thing over here, and I'm gonna grab a box and whisker plot. Box and whisker is the formal name for what is, what is commonly called a box plot. So I'm gonna pick that one, and what I get here is a box plot. And I'm gonna go ahead and, actually I'm not gonna do much with this because I'm gonna reformat it because I don't like this. But again, I'm not really gonna explain what's going on here yet. So what we've got is just the age. And you'll notice that I don't have whether or not persons perished or survived on the Titanic based on the data we have, so I need to add that in. So the easiest way to do that is for me just to click into the chart and pick select data. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna select the horizontal, right, the horizontal axis, and show it what categories I want to be used in the visualization. So I click edit, and it says, hey, Dave, pick a range of values. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go over here to the C column, just click on C2, Control Shift down arrow, and select everything. Click OK. Click OK, and now I gotta scroll back up to the top here, and voila, I've got a box plot. Okay, but I'm not done yet. I don't like the way this looks. This is my aesthetic choice. You can leave it like this if you like. I actually prefer this version right here, and I'm gonna get rid of these lines because I think they're distracting, and I'm not gonna keep the chart title because I think it's distracting. Okay, and here we have a box plot. I'm gonna scroll over so that my smiling face does not cover it up. Okay, so we've got a box plot here. Box plot, awesome sauce. So here's the only thing. We don't know how to interpret this. So let me pop over to PowerPoint real quick and I'll explain how you interpret this data visualization. Okay, here we are in PowerPoint. And all I've done is I just copied and pasted in the box plot visualization from Excel into PowerPoint so that we can just talk about it. So the first thing we need to realize is that this graphical depiction here is really talking about the age column. It's really talking about the numbers. It's talking about the distribution of values in the age column. And we talked about the distribution of numeric data before when we talked about histograms, right? We threw things in buckets and then we counted up all the numbers 
that were in the buckets, and that gave us a frequency distribution, and we made it a graphical representation. This is another graphical representation of a numeric distribution. Now, this is different than a histogram because the lines, the way this is actually depicted as a graphic has very specific meanings, which makes it very, very useful. So first up, what we have here is this line right here. You notice this line right here and this line right here. This corresponds to what is known as the median. And if you're not familiar, this is a super, super simple concept. Think of a column of numbers in Excel, right? Column of numbers. And let's say you sort them from the lowest to the highest value. So you have a column of numbers, the smallest one up here. The median, or the 50th percentile, is just the number that's in the middle. That's all the median is. It's just saying, look, if you got a big old pile of numbers, sort them. What's the middle in the number? That, or the, the, the number that's in the middle. <laughs> the number that's in the middle. That's the median, the 50th percentile, right? It splits the data in half. Half of the data is higher than the median and half the data is lower than the median. It's a pretty simple concept. Now, not surprisingly, if this is the median, then these two lines probably have some sort of distinct meaning, and they do. This is the 75th percentile, and this is the 25th percentile. And the easiest way to think about this, once again, let's take this bottom line here. You sorted your data, right? You split it in half with the median. If you split it in half again, that is the 25th percentile because below that line is the last quarter of the data values. So all the data values, median splits in half, 25th percentile splits the bottom half in half again. We're into quarters, essentially. Similarly, the 75th percentile is up above, and anything above the 75th percentile is just the last quarter of your data values. So that's what these lines represent. And it's a pretty useful way to just get some sort of idea of like, where is the, the gravity, the biggest chunk of the numbers? Where are they located? In what range? And basically what this tells you is, is that half the data is within this box. Between this value and this value, you have 50% of your data, half your data. Next up is this thing called the IQR, which stands for interquartile range. And all it is, is basically is how big is this line right here? Take this line, take this value, the 75th percentile of the data, subtract off the 25th percentile of the data, and that tells you how long this line is. And that just tells you like, okay, how many values, what is the range of values between the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile, right? How splayed out is your data? If you, you, know, if you sort it and you've got the middle 50%, is it narrow like this or is it wide like that? That's what the IQR tells you. It's a very useful statistic. It characterizes your numeric, your numeric data. Okay, and lastly, this is the box. Remember I said earlier, box and whisker is the formal name for a box plot. This is obviously the box part of the box plot. And let's talk about the whiskers. These, this, these things right here. These are the whiskers, these lines and um, these lines right here. These are the whiskers. And the whiskers are super useful because they kind of characterize, once again, your data. And there's a standard calculation that is used to derive how long this line is and how long this line is, how long this whisker is and how long this whisker is. And here's the calculation for the top whisker. So this line right here, right? How long this whisker is, is determined by one of two things. It's either the maximum data value, so you sort your data and it's that top most largest value, or it is this line here, the 75th percentile, this line right here, 75th percentile, plus 1.5 times the IQR. And the IQR, once again, is the length of this line here. Right? So it's a standard calculation. It says, look, whichever of these two values is smaller, then use that for the length of this whisker. And we'll see why that's important in a second. Next up, we need to take a look at the bottom line here. And the bottom line is a similar calculation. So this line is either determined by the minimum value in the data, right? You sort it, the bottom most value, or it's the 25th percentile line minus 1.5 times the IQR again. 
whichever of these two values is larger. And the reason why this is really super cool is because it provides a standardized way of evaluating your collection of numeric data, right? That sorted numeric column of data and determining if you have any outliers, which you see here as dots. These are outliers. So what it's saying is, look, statistically speaking, based on the data, we would expect most values to fall between the whiskers. The bulk of your data, half of your data, is gonna be right here inside the box between the 75th and 25th percentile lines. And the remaining data is gonna be between the two whiskers. Anything that's outside of the whiskers is an outlier. It's a value that's extremely large or extremely small based on the collection of data. Now, there will be some people that will tell you, and rightly so, that a box plot by itself has a lot of problems. You shouldn't rely on a box plot solely, and that, that's completely valid. However, as we saw in video three, we're not relying solely on box plots. We're also using histograms and other types of visualizations in this series. So they're extremely useful because they're part of a larger context of data visualizations that we're using to explore our data set. Okay, so this is how you interpret a box plot. Now let's go ahead and go back to Excel and play around with our box plot. Okay, here we are back in trusty old Excel and we've got a box plot and we can see here that, you know, there's not really much difference between the age distribution for those that survived versus those that perished. Because you can see that the boxes pretty much overlap and the whiskers definitely overlap. So the bulk of the age data for both those that perished and for those that survived basically overlaps. So this isn't telling us a heck of a lot right now. However, notice this, we can go back over to our table here and we can say, let's go ahead and only look at, let's say males in, hold on, we gotta wait for this thing to refresh here real quick. Okay, and we can see now that our box plot has refreshed only for males but we can refine it even further. We can say, look, we want males in second class. So let's go ahead and make it only second class and it'll take a second here. And our box plot refreshes. And let's just go ahead and make it bigger so we can actually see it again. Boom. Look at that. Now this is an interesting result because what this is telling us is that for males in second class, and we saw this already, by the way, in part three when we were doing histograms, we can we know already that young males, boys, male children survive disproportionately. And now you can see a big difference, right? Look at the median. The median of males that survived in second class is very, very low. It's like three, three, three years old. So this is a result, right? This is a prominent result. This tells us that, ah, at least for males in second class, based on the distribution of survived versus perished ages, that younger folks tend to survive in second class if they were male. And we know that already from our histogram, but the box plot is just another way of taking a look at data, um, numeric data, the distribution of it vis-a-vis -vis some sort of categorical value. And that's extremely useful in business data because business data has tons and tons of categorical values. In this data set, for example, we're dealing with embarked, whether or not you survived, your um, class of ticket, first class, second class, third class, whether you're male or female, these are all categoricals. And analyzing numeric data in relation to those is extremely useful, as we're seeing in this video and as we saw in the last video. What would be really cool is if we could see all of these different types of combinations of P class and gender vis-a-vis -vis our box plots. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me flip over to PowerPoint again, and let me show you what I mean by that. Here we are in PowerPoint, and what you can see here is a awesome box plot visualization. Notice this is very similar to what we looked at in the last video with histograms, where in this top row, we have females, all the females in the data set, and in this bottom row, we have all the males in the data set, and the columns are third class, second class, and first class, respectively. And what we see here is perished and survived, right? These are the people that perished, unfortunately, on the Titanic, and these are the folks that survived. 
and we see all the box plots all at once. And we can just kind of like sit back and just kind of let our eyes just kind of like gaze at it and focus in. And of course, the first thing we notice is this right here. Out of all six of these plots, this one obviously catches our eye first. And once again, this is males in second class. In case you're curious, this particular data visualization was created using the R programming language. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I have an online course specifically designed to take Excel users and quickly and easily, easily teach them R programming. And my course teaches you how to create visualizations like this. So if you're interested in that, just go ahead and click up here and you'll find another video that provides more details on how an Excel user can learn how to do R programming and create real super powerful visualizations like this. And trust me, it's super easy. It's a lot easier than you think. Video number four is complete. Video number five, we'll start working with bar charts. When that's up and ready, I will update the video and you'll see a card, a link, either here or here for that particular video. Box plots, wildly useful stuff, especially what we saw in the R programming example when you can see a bunch of them all laid out in like a grid, really makes your data pop. So box plots, use them. Don't use them by themselves, as I said earlier. You're gonna to wanna to combine them with histograms and other things that we're gonna be looking at in this series. All right, there you have it. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.